Um, so, are we finally on to Chris? Yes. It's been a long way for you, hasn't it? Yes, <laughs> yes it has. <laughs> okay, so we have a few reports, really not a lot to go over in them, but they're here for your review anyway. Um, the first would be the expense report. Uh, a couple of items to point out, last month the teachers' salaries were not encumbered and I stated that they would be by this meeting. Um, most of them are, for some reason, $2,500 in each account has not been, although Mary did say she would go back in and put that through. So um, those are essentially pretty close to all encumbered. Um, right below that, the professional development, you can see there's about 93,000, almost 94,000 remaining. That is used to pay for the five days of professional development that the teachers have throughout the school year. Uh, so we will be transferring some salary expenses to that account, hopefully this month actually, just to again get that uh, out of the way really. Um, typically we waited until June, but there's really no point in doing that. So um, again, just to give a clearer picture, we can do that. Um, at this point in time, basically all of the accounts that would need to be encumbered have been, including utilities, um, based on the bills that we've been receiving. You might see some uh, utilities accounts that have surpluses in them. That's certainly a good thing. Um, that would mean that we just haven't used as much of these particular items as we thought we might. So uh, it's certainly nice to see. Um, also, you might see in the report there's a few balances uh, that are in the negative in certain accounts. We will be making transfers to bring those back to at least a zero balance in, in this month. Any questions on that report at all? Next we have the revolving accounts report. Um, again, this is something you receive more or less monthly depending on if I can receive the, uh, the figures from the town before your meeting. Um, in this particular month we have not much of a difference really. Uh, a slight uptick as it seems uh, in the lunch account. Um, still in the negative however. Uh, and a large decrease in the preschool revolving account. That is because we have transferred all of those expenses um, from the budget to the preschool revolving account that we typically do once a year. So um, that has been done a little bit earlier this year than in previous years, but um, that explains the decrease. So, so the, the the negative balance in the school lunch is that entirely due to unpaid school it's lunch not, bills? It's not. No, it's oh, okay. it's really just a case of the program not being able to sustain Same itself. Okay. Um, you can see the balance on June 30th of 95.82, a whopping 95.82. Right, right. um, that was actually a result of, I don't remember the exact amount, but we'll Did say we thirteen to $15,000 yeah. of those expenses brought over to the school budget from the lunch budget. So it would have been really in the whole close to $15,000 on June 30th. That brought it up to essentially even, um, and you can see again, this is what's happening. And it's been happening for quite some time. Well, we had a large surplus in that account several years ago, and it's just been going down ever since, so. Have the bulk pre-purchasing of food been, has that been completed for the year? I don't know if it's been completed for the year. As I had mentioned, it's, it's expense heavy in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Um, with paper products, you know, things like that. I would imagine throughout the year they still have to buy food. Um, so I would doubt that they've purchased it all for the rest of the year. I know Diane buys a lot of fresh foods. So oh, especially in the, the spring, yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine that she has a lot of that to go yet. Okay. Uh, next we have the grant report. Just a couple of items I wanted to point out here. The circuit breaker. Um, it says can be carried over, and it was carried over from last year actually, about $60,000 is brought over from last year. You can carry over the amount that you've been awarded in the prior year. So for, well actually I suppose in that year, for FY14, we received about $80,000, we can carry forward $80,000 into FY15. I don't see us carrying that much forward, but I do think we will carry some. Um, <laughs> Had agrees with you. Say and, uh, <laughs> and the other item that can be carried over would be Title I. I don't really see us carrying anything over in that account. Um, other than that, the grants, I, I will be taking care of the Title IIA teacher quality grant. If not this month, certainly next month. I try to time things so that the town can process them in addition to the school department in the same month. 
So typically I try to get transfers done early in the month so that way when I'm proving to the town by the end of the month, we've all done the same transfers and I'm not trying to figure out what was done by one side and not done by the other. So that doesn't get transferred over in the month of March being as late as it is, it may be done just in early April. But either way, that will entirely be spent as well. <coughs> And the last item is kind of an FYI item, really, for all of you. It's just um, correspondence with the need for new school buses in the district. Um, we received some information from Tricia about the buses. Um, I believe it was in December. I told you we were waiting for the town mechanic to uh, respond. He did respond with some details as well about it. Uh, at the top of this handout, you can see it's just the email I sent to David with this as an attachment to him. Um, and he has responded that he received it and he's reviewing the information now. Uh, he also did ask, um, he said, I thought we were actually looking at outsourcing the entire transportation um, portion of the budget, <coughs> which we did look into actually when we went out to bid. Okay. But the cost was just so different exactly. and so much higher than what we can do ourselves that yep. it was it was really just ruled out right there. So um, I will um, let you know. I, I have I to confess that I completely forgot to go to the capital planning committee meeting tonight at five thirty. Oh, yeah. So <coughs> Do I need to um, bring this to the next capital planning committee meeting, the bus, and are, are we you asking? talking with the town or the school committee? No, the town. So I missed that one too. Then. Yeah, the town. Um, I, I believe that would be a good thing. David, you know, obviously has this. Okay. But I think it would certainly um, be beneficial if you were to bring it right. as well. I'm sorry. I, your discussion of the capital purchase made me realize I missed the capital meeting. Sorry. Okay. So all in all, you're feeling like we're doing how now that we are at the end of March? It's getting tighter. Um, and I have said that um, I send out weekly reports similar to what you get, but with just every account listed. Um, and I send that to all of the building administrators and their secretaries, as well as um, the superintendent and the secretaries in the central office. That way everybody knows where we stand with each account. Um, and the last couple of them I have said that, you know, as these accounts are winding down, they really need to be cautious about making purchases because it becomes more difficult to transfer money from, say, your math book account to your English book account when these accounts are getting closer to zero. There's just not any money to transfer anymore. So it's, you know, it's getting toward the end of the year where purchases should be winding down at this point. Um, May I say something to that also? Sure. Chris, that... And it's, it's very common, as Chris points out, for districts to just simply as they process purchase orders to then transfer money. Um, I have probably, and I take responsibility for this, I am sure I have driven Chris nuts. I am quite sure I've driven the administration nuts. Uh, I, so what I have asked is when a purchase order comes through, a secretary in our office checks this weekly report that we get. If there's no money in the account, the purchase order is sent back. I will not sign a purchase order unless a transfer has been completed. And that's just, I just won't do that. So, um, it, so rather than waiting after the fact and transferring monies and coming to balance, I would just prefer it's done before. So a bit more cumbersome, but um, certainly. Does that drive sure. you nuts, or do you actually secretly leave? No, I, I mean, I have to, well, I guess it's both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it, that's kind it, of, that's a win-win response. <laughs> it's very good. It, it, you know, it's, it's um, sometimes tricky to do those transfers um, <laughs> as often, quite honestly. Um, but at the same time, in reality, you know, purchase order is supposed to be done before purchases. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way it's supposed to be done so that the money is held and that way you know that there's actually money available. That does not happen sometimes, in, in which case we get an invoice. And that, that would account for some of those negative balances you see. Well, we don't really have a choice. We, you know, right. There's an invoice in our hands. It's right. not like they're saying, can I buy books? Well, you've only got $20 left. You know, it's, I already bought books. Yeah. And therefore, OK, well, we have to pay this invoice. But <coughs> you know, we, we do have to watch that, actually, because it's, it's out of order from the way it should be. Um, it's something we're very focused on tightening up. Yeah. <coughs> it's like keeping your checkbook balance. Yes, yeah, spoiler alert. 
really aggregates, <laughs> really aggregates faculty, but let me go on record to say that. <laughs> it just feels like it's an extra step, but something we'd like to check about. You all set? That's all I have. Excellent. Linda? Yes? Can we revisit the minutes? Because I remembered the factual error. Why, I yes. I and now that we know how important the minutes are. Please. <laughs> On page three under Beck, Brian Beck's presentation, mm -hmm. it says, Clush asked if there would be changes to start time. Right. Beck said yes. But that oh, can't I'm be sorry. true. No, because there aren't incorrect. changes to start time. No. Good cat. Nice, Roby. <laughs> Thank you. Do we vote that? You said you talked yeah. about we it. We don't have to vote that, do we? Changes to start time? To move your vote. Yeah, last, at last meeting yes. when you talked oh, about the yeah. schedule yeah. and you All confirmed right. that there would not be changes right. to the start time, but that that was discussed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, and we looked at it as, you know, we wanted to keep that as a constraint. Yeah. Good catch. Thank you. Is that it? talking. I was like, that's it. Thank you very much.